Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at the Daystate Huntsman and its new Revere guys, which features a brand new side lever cocking mechanism and a new magazine. But first up, I'm heading out to make a serious bag of grey squirrels. As you can see, I'm out on the squirrels this morning and there are quite a few about. Well, how about that then? I've only been here for about an hour. I'm already starting to build a decent bag. Now, there are a lot of grey squirrels in these woods. They're causing a serious amount of damage to the trees here and also having a real negative impact on the resident native wildlife. So the owners are absolutely desperate for me to thin them out. I've already put in a couple of sessions here and they've produced some pretty good numbers. Now, what I've done is the usual setup. I've just put a feeding station in a likely looking place and I've just kept it topped up for a couple of weeks just so the squirrels become accustomed to it, get used to finding feed there and just become more and more confident. The result is that they're now absolutely queuing up for it. Right, I just have a quick run through the kit that I'm using today. Now I don't really want to talk too much though by what we've seen so far that the squirrels don't seem to care too much about us being here. So the gun is the FX Impact Mark II. I've used it a lot in the hide um, right through this year. It's a lovely compact little gun, handles brilliantly in the hide. It's also very accurate. Huge capacity magazine. Um, it's not something I usually need to worry about, although we are getting a lot of shots today. I've paired that with an MTC Mamba light scope, um, and that's held on as ever with sports match scope mounts and the pallets that I'm using today are Air Arms Diablo Field. Now, unusually for me, I have converted this over to 22 calibre. I usually prefer 177 at sub 12 foot pounds, but I'm experimenting a bit with 22 and at relatively close range when shooting at feeders like this, it seems to be doing the job. So that's enough chat, let's get back to it.
The morning has got off to a flying start and it's not long before another grey drops in at the feeder. They really are just keeping on coming today. That one dropped like a stone now. That is the brilliant thing about using a feeding station like this. You're just not taking risky shots. Um, I'm only about 25 metres away from where the squirrels are. And what tends to happen is they're just coming in, picking up a peanut and then sitting still with it. So it makes it very easy to get those clean headshots. Waiting for squirrels to show up at the feeder usually takes a patient approach, but I'm not having my patience tested too much this morning. What I am being patient about is waiting for squirrels to present me with an easy target. That one dangled for a bit, but uh, although it's always worth reloading quickly just in case they need a follow-up shot, it's usually absolutely nothing to worry about. Hit a squirrel in the head and their nervous reflex is generally to clench up and that often means that they'll just cling and dangle. Quite frankly, they're already dead, it just takes them a while to relax and drop down to the ground. You can see that I'm using a very basic hide setup. These squirrels are so hooked on the peanuts that they're not really considering that there could be danger lurking nearby. The action isn't quite as frantic now, but the appeal of the feeding station is still drawing in a few squirrels that can't resist an easy meal. We've got quite a lot of squirrels on the ground now and even that isn't discouraging others from clambering down to raid the feeder. I absolutely love it when squirrels are presented like that. When you drive a pellet into the head at that angle you know it's going straight into the brain box. And if it does over penetrate, it's very likely to carry on through to the heart and lung area. So it's fantastic for a clean kill. It's quite a warm, bright day today, but the yew tree above my hide is providing shade that's keeping us cool and helping with concealment too.
And there's another one. I think I'm going to make that the last one of the session. I've been in a hide for about three hours. The pins and needles are starting to creep in. I'm desperate to just get out and move about a bit. But what a session it's been. I must have shot about a dozen squirrels. Um, I'm also in no doubt at all that there are a lot more still to be had here. So after I've picked these ones up, I'm going to top up the feeder just to keep them concentrated in this area because quite frankly, I'm going to be back here again very soon. A brilliant session on the greys there. Next up, I'm taking a look at the acclaimed Daystate Huntsman in its new Revere edition. Check out the great subscription deals for print and digital versions of Airgun Shooter magazine. You won't miss a single issue, even if you can't get to the shops. The Daystate Huntsman is an iconic air rifle. It's had a few updates over recent years, and here I have it in its latest variant, the Revere. Now, this air gun has some serious advancements, including a new magazine and a new and very slick side lever cocking and loading mechanism. It is a quality air gun and it has a recommended retail price of £1,068. Not bad for a day state with serious pedigree. Kicking off with proportions, this air gun weighs 2.8 kilos unscoped and measures 93 centimetres before you fit a silencer. So it is pretty compact. It's also very well balanced with the point of balance falling just in front of the trigger guard. Apart from being very pointable, it's also a real looker and the cylinder is set particularly low into the stock to give it the appearance of a classic sporting rifle. The oiled walnut stock is made by Minelli and is available in both right and left-handed versions, both of which feature nice capping and a spacer on the pistol grip. In terms of actual function, it's fitted with a soft ventilated butt pad and has a really nicely defined rollover cheek piece. Moving forwards, the pistol grip has a fairly shallow rake which ties in well with the gun's classic styling. Now the back of that grip features a thumb cutaway which also gives you the option of shooting thumb up. The pistol grip is adorned with some very clean, stylized checkering which looks good and feels great in the hand. The forend is fairly slim but it's nice and long so it can accommodate a wide variety of different hold styles. There's also plenty of checkering on the forend and just like that on the pistol grip, it's nice and sharp. It also extends all the way around the underside of the stock. Finish and engineering appear to be of an exceptionally high standard and I really like the matte black finish of the metalwork. The 45 centimeter barrel is shrouded which does provide a little bit of sound suppression, but it's also threaded to accept an additional silencer. Scope attachment is via dovetail rails, which straddle the magazine. Now, the new magazine has a higher shot capacity than earlier models. 13 shots in 177, 11 in 22, and 10 in 25 now that new magazine is also a little bit larger and higher, so you need to make sure that your scope is mounted high enough to clear it. When it comes to performance, I think the new magazine is a huge improvement. Pull back the side lever and it pulls out from the right hand side, or the left on left hand models. Once you've got the magazine out, you pull open the faceplate, which is held in place by a magnet. You then rotate the inner drum clockwise as far as it will go and then drop a pellet into the bottom chamber to hold it under its spring tension. You can now let go of the inner drum and it won't spin back, enabling you to fill the rest of the chambers. Once it's full, return the faceplate and then slide the magazine back into position where it's held securely in place by a magnet. Now return the side lever and it's ready to shoot. 
The side lever is one of the biggest developments on the Revere and combined with that new magazine makes it an absolute joy to shoot. Its biathlon type drop down handle comes naturally to hand and the extra leverage greatly reduces cocking effort, something that should be really noticeable on FAC rated models. By and large, it's a huge advancement for the gun and makes for fast, smooth and very precise reloading. If you opt for a high power version, this air gun can churn out more than 40 foot pounds. This is a sub 12 foot pound model and it's actually producing about 11 foot pounds at the muzzle. It's doing it incredibly consistently, thanks to the Huma regulator and it's showing a shot to shot variation of less than five feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now the gauge that displays regulator pressure is just on the underside of the forend. There's another dial at the front of the cylinder and that one shows your remaining air. Now the Revere takes a full charge of 250 bar from which this one is returning about 140 shots. Refilling is by means of a quick fill probe. Simply turn the cap at the front of the cylinder to expose the inlet and plug in. This day state is equipped with an excellent adjustable two stage trigger. The swept back blade really suits the gun styling and also feels great. Now straight out of the box, the first stage feels fairly light, but there's a really obvious stop and the second stage brake is remarkably crisp. The safety catch is positioned at the rear of the action where it can easily be operated with your thumb. The gun is safe when it's down and to the left and you simply flick it up when you're ready to take the shot. Frustratingly, the rain has forced us inside today, but I have been able to put in some range time with the Revere and I can confirm that it is a very accurate air gun. The new magazine contributes to that and the trigger and regulator probably also play a big part. This air gun is capable of practically putting pellet on pellet at 30 meters and at 40 meters, 10 millimeter groups from center to center are consistently achievable. My air gun shooter magazine colleague, Mike Morton, achieved similar results when he was testing this air gun. So that's the Daystate Huntsman Revere. The new side lever action has brought this classic air gun bang up to date, yet it still maintains its traditional good looks. Cocking and loading are definitely faster and smoother, and there is certainly no questioning this air gun's accuracy potential. The Daystate Huntsman has always been regarded as a fine air gun, and the latest tweaks with this model have made it even better. Look out for the new and improved Air Gun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all we've got time for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.